Good evening, all. What a night. I'm so excited because tonight is about celebrating the youth. It's about celebrating our fellows, our Clinton fellows, many of whom are here tonight. Be nice to get just a little bit of silence in the back, please. Thank you. I'd like to first thank Mayor Ed Lee from San Francisco for gracing our evening. A warm thank you. My deepest gratitude to our directors, some of our out-of-town directors who are here tonight, our trustees, our corporate sponsors. Thank you for including us in, in, in your corporate cycle twice, given that we've um, brought our event to the, to the spring instead of the fall. Thank you. Um, to our many, many co-chairs, our gala chairs, our friends who come in year after year, knowing that we work hard to produce good work for you and get you the best return on your philanthropic dollar. Thank you so much for being here. I'd just like to thank um, our leadership council from Los Angeles, who are all represented here, and, and we hope to um, replicate this in LA someday. And in the spirit of the youth, and given that we are celebrating the young, I want to acknowledge a young gentleman of, who's 20, who was 25 years old when he said to his father, Dad, I don't think you're being fulfilled where you work in the corporate world. I think you need to join AIF. And so a very warm welcome to our new CEO, Mr. Ravi Kumar. We live in a world that has become increasingly global and interdependent. And while there are some who have benefited exponentially with this growth, there are many more who live in the margins of poverty, in abject poverty, and are um, underprivileged. So, the, so AIF's fellowship program is a program that was created to bridge these barriers, to, to cross-share knowledge, ideas, networks, with, with others so that we can build more equity in our world, especially opportunity equity. There is no stronger testament to the sheer power of the individual and collective imagination than the stories that you're about to hear tonight. Our fellows have, created this e have curated this evening to show you the richness and diversity of our program, to show you this, what they bring to life in terms of you know, the, the India vignettes you experienced in the foyer during the cocktail hour, to all the imagery and videos that, that you see around you, and including the artful music that you'll see later on uh, by our accomplished fellows. When you support AIF, you're supporting the next generation of Americans to participate in the change they wish to see, in the change they want to be in the world. And these fellows are helping transform ideas and visions and projects into, on, into concrete realities. And this transformation is happening now. It's happening because we planted hundreds of seeds of fellows across India in metros, in old, rural towns, in large metros, between young and old, able and disabled. And the beauty of this program is that these fellows have experienced and seen firsthand what it means to be underprivileged, what it means not to have clean water, what it means not to be able to send your child to school. And the best part of this program is that these fellows have experienced firsthand the joy of making a difference. Isn't that something? I will never forget Charlie's words when you know, he used to work in, in an NGO in the Himalayan foothills. And he talks about, while the outcome is important, what's more important is the learning and the experience of the process. Or someone like Jeremy in Orissa, when I met him in Bhuvaneshwar, he talked about the fact that despite abject poverty, he would see so much contentment in people's faces. And he said, you know, we need to learn how to be content. Coming from a 20-something-year-old, I think of so many of us who are much older who are struggling to reach that wisdom. When I look back at, at AIF and I reflect upon the work we've done, 
you know, we've raised, tonight, by the way, we've raised $1.1 million already, so please give yourselves a big hand. But over the years, we've raised $81 million and impacted 1.7 million lives. Those are big numbers. But our legacy is not about the projects that we're funding, and it's not entirely about these numbers. It's about the relationships we've fostered. It's about the human connections we've sparked. It's about the solidarity we have enabled to, to help, help the privileged and the un, underprivileged work together to make a difference and to resolve issues. We are here, I think, to fill the critical gap of linking, empowering, and connecting powerful networks of communities, both here in, the, here in the US and in India, that are committed to being part of the change they wish to see in this world. And you all are part of this movement. Can we dare imagine a world where the children of the world will have equal opportunity? Where the Charlies and the Jeremys of the world can make this place a better, better place to live in? I really believe we can, don't you? Thank you. It's my privilege and honor now to invite our, our honoree for the evening. He, most of you know him as a businessman. Most of you know that while there are visionary investors around, he's perhaps the king of them all. He had the potential to spot and invest in Google, Amazon, and Netscape. His venture capital firm, Sherpalo Ventures, has mentored many disruptive early stage ventures. But what you might not perhaps know is that he and his wife, Sajata, and their family have been passionate supporters for various nonprofit initiatives in online education, K through 12 education, and higher education, partnering with the likes of the Gates Foundation, the Hewlett Foundation, and the Google Foundation. They work with organizations like Guru that enables online learning for hundreds of uh, kids across India. They also work on literacy and livelihood with Magic Bus, focused on street kids between 6 and 15. And we too at AIF are partnering with, uh, with Ram Sri Ram and his family uh, with the Magic Bus. Finally, he supports 80 kids in high school in a summer residential program at Stanford to work on robotics. He's also on the board of Stanford. Please join me in providing a warm welcome and congratulations to Mr. Ram Sriram. I'd like to um, invite the vice chair of the American India Foundation, Mr. Pradeep Kashyap, a dear friend and my partner in crime, to join me in presenting Mr. Sriram with his award. Thank you, Lata. That was uh, a glowing introduction. I think it, my mother would have actually believed everything you just said. Um, <clears throat> good evening, ladies and gentlemen. So I'm here to talk about giving. So my first experience with giving came as a, a young man, about 11 years old, watching my middle-class grandparents start a school near Chennai in a little village Back then, it was a village. Now, it's part of greater Chennai called Tambaram. And they just wanted to start a small elementary school. They didn't have a lot of resources, but I would see him passionately go every day, spend time at the school after his regular day job. And I often wondered why he was doing this. And I would ask him as I was growing up, what are you doing this for, and what's the benefit, and so forth. And he would point to the kids. Most of these kids wouldn't otherwise have had an education. And of course, he didn't know what happened to them later in life and how they moved on, but he certainly wanted to impact them in those few years, uh, in those early childhood years. So I learned a few lessons from that experience. One, you know, you need to have a passion for something 
outside of your own career because it enhances your knowledge. It kind of gives you a diverse set of experiences. You're actually living someone else's life when you support a nonprofit because you're having a retail experience looking at the life of, uh, of another child, especially the fellows that have served in India, I'm sure have great stories to tell of the people that they've actually touched. So putting yourself in someone else's shoes and walking that mile makes you understand what they're going through and how their lives can be changed by a little bit of philanthropy. The second, you don't have to be rich to be philanthropic. At any stage in life, you can give it. So you don't have to be old to be philanthropic. Um, and, and lastly, I think giving is something that essentially is about doing, spending your time and money and effort in doing something that makes you sort of focus on something that outlasts you, except for the people that believe they would live forever. Um, for, for, for most of us, it means leaving a legacy of something that goes beyond our own life. And I think that's the beauty of it. The, the other thing that, that really strikes me, which is very interesting about the philanthropy that we now do, and we continue to focus on education, uh, and partnering with AIF on, uh, specifically on Magic Bus, where some of the fellows have served, the, the ability to actually make a difference in these lives cannot be underestimated. It's, it's a huge difference. A little bit of money goes a long way, especially if you could, in every family, if you could make one person go to school or college, the trajectory of that whole family changes. The attitude, the positiveness, it causes more people in that family to want to go to college, for example. So I think it's, it's, a, it's a huge benefactor. And it's not about just saying we want to banish poverty. It's about education. So in specifically, why does it matter to give to organizations like AIF? I think I'll mention a couple of things. One, India has a bewildering array of choices in NGOs. Everybody wants to start an NGO focused on something. The problem is to, to wade through those choices and know which ones are good or bad, and, the, and there are many that are shady, uh, is very hard. So it's better to have a filter of someone that actually knows which ones work and which ones don't and invest through that. The second, I think, is about philanthropy itself. The challenge in most philanthropy is growth capital. Most philanthropies suffer from the ability to actually scale up. So the impact is much greater when they scale up. And to the extent that you can channel your resources into a platform that allows for scale, it's a wonderful thing. The other thing I wanted to say is, as you think about philanthropy, think about how it can actually add another dimension to your life beyond your career, beyond the, the wonderful work you do with your extended family, helping you know, perhaps uh, the, the less uh, economically able go to school in, in the out extended family in India, et cetera. Giving to a stranger is really important because you need to impact someone's life outside of your core group of people. And the gratitude, the gift of gratitude that you get, the sense of fulfillment that you feel, and really the sense of completeness in terms of having been able to accomplish something that makes you feel like this is something I could be remembered by is a wonderful feeling. And, and that's what causes us to feel passionate about philanthropy, among other things. So thank you, and I hope you have a great evening. Enjoy.